Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Over Hall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we are here with what is probably a very bad idea. I introduced the AJ-260 in my previous video on the Saturn 1B, replacing his first stage with them. And here I have replaced the boosters on the space shuttle with the AJ-260. It says SM-222, but that's because of how it's added in my Shearstrut engine pack. So, yeah. Well, when I replaced the first stage of Saturn 1B, we didn't get very good results. Will we get very good results from replacing the boosters on the space shuttle with these? That's hard to say, right? Uh, right now, uh, considering what happened with the Saturn 1B, uh, the Delta V reading might suggest that it's good, but once again, it's not reading the right surface sea level thrust. And so, yeah, that thrust weight ratio certainly should be more than that. And really, the space shuttle by default has a pretty high thrust weight ratio at the start anyway, so adding more thrust doesn't necessarily help. As it is, the space shuttle's main engines throttle down during max Q in order to avoid extra pressure and drag and all that business. So adding really high thrust solid rocket motors in place of the somewhat less, uh, well, they have uh, 20,000 kilonewtons. The regular SRBs have about 12,000 kilonewtons at sea level. So that's the factor that we're increasing by. Uh, it's a big chunk. And will it just result in more drag that slows us down and not produce any good results? Or will we actually get a payload capacity increase? That is our question. And I have no idea. <laughs> so I have put 36 tons in the bay. The regular shuttle capacity was about 26 tons max. It never actually carried that, but uh, it carried close to that in some cases. And adjusted for inclination, the modules that brought to the International Space Station were pretty close. So yeah, we are going to see if this works. I have not tested it. I don't know if they're going to separate properly. It looks ridiculous. Let's just go for it. Okay, well, it is on the shuttle launch pad. The apertures for the SRBs probably ought to be widened, but it won't cause a problem for now. And I'm going to have a shuttle 260 launch script, and I've written that up. And that mainly adjusts for the thrust to weight ratio, which in theory should be higher, even though it doesn't show that in the VAV. So, yep. Mechjeb doesn't seem to understand these SRBs very well anymore. Here we go. Thirty six tons in the bay. Of course, what might be more optimal is to also increase the size of the external tank, but we're not going there yet. It certainly has it's past two G's of acceleration, not clearly, so they do have a thrust curve on them, so they sort of go down over time. That will help things. It won't be crazy kind of G-forces through max Q or anything like that. They actually last for less time than the regular SRBs. Uh, the main tank is getting a little bit hot, though. Well, off they go. They didn't- oh, they did kill something. Ah, uh, they killed the control surfaces. Okay. And the main tank is a little bit hot. But, you know, if it doesn't explode, it doesn't explode. We'll see how this goes. Of course, it's not quite valid without the elevons there. We'll have to add extra separatrons. So far it seems okay. We could maybe even put more in the bay, which is sort of a surprise. I'm interested to see what happens, but we're also not seeing as much time to apoapsis. Maybe we need to go steeper. And so instead of telling it that we have a high thrust weight ratio, we'll just tell the launch script that we have a slightly lower one, and then it'll go steeper to compensate for that. That will avoid the overheating and give us more time so we don't have to pitch up so much. We'll see how it goes, though. Well, it's held the time to apoapsis fine, and we seem to be okay. 
still have some spare Delta V to work with. So maybe we can carry more, but I should, probably shouldn't say that at this point. We'll see at the end how much stage Delta V we have in the external tank. Okay, it has made orbit. Oh, I didn't quite catch that. Okay. Well, we can definitely do 36 tons to orbit. 255 by 85 kilometers. And let me just quickly check the video. It seems like we had a whopping 446 meters per second left, so we can definitely do more. I'm going to revert this, and we're going to pump up the payload and see what we can do. Well, this is a completely different situation than the Saturn 1B somehow. We still basically got a hydrolock stage, but I guess two is better than one on the AJ-260s? Go figure. And of course a really big, efficient hydrolock stage helps. Space shuttle for the win and everything. Um, let's see. Let's use this. We had more than 400 meters per second left, so we can drop that down to 9,100. In theory, but then the Space Shuttle's OMS system is going to have trouble. Getting it to some decent location. Uh, seems ridiculous to try 50 tons. That's like double what the space shuttle normally carries. Why? Why is this so different? This is still KSP 1.12, by the way. Um, same version. Why does this seem so different than the Saturn 1B situation? <laughs> okay, now we've got some extra separatrons on the boosters. Hopefully, our Elevons will not get killed. And run shuttle 260. Well, lots of SRB plume there. That'll peter out though. Okay. Here we go. Off go the boosters. Well, they went off cleanly this time. The external tank is overheating, but you know, it didn't explode last time, so it should be okay. This may be optimal. Well, it's still looking pretty good at this point, as far as making orbit and everything. Okay, here we go, last little bit here. And it's basically using everything in the external tank. A little bit left over, 160 meters per second. Maybe we could get to 52 tons and really make it... Oh, it didn't really separate very nicely there. Um, but we could get to exactly double the 26 tons. But I don't think I need to retest it, this is uh, pretty... Remarkable as it is. Let's see the OMS engines do the thing. 50 tons to orbit. Well, that's a completely different situation than when we used the AJ-260 with the Saturn 1B. Replacing SRBs seemed to do a lot better than replacing a Carolock stage, but... Hmm. <laughs> what can I say? Now, the apoapsis did end up a little bit lower than usual for this shuttle launch script, but it's acceptable. It's not like within the atmosphere or anything, and considering it's carrying so much more, that's not too bad. Still got a disposal orbit for the external tank and everything. Okay, now let's see how much it uses up. I mean, 288 meters per second doesn't seem too bad. Okay, 303 by 199, and with 215 meters per second left, we sh would certainly be able to get back down, especially after we kick out the payload. Uh, 50 tons out of it would certainly help. But, yep, I think I'm satisfied. We could probably take a little bit more than this, but not too much more. And that's a very big difference from the Saturn 1B test. So the only problem is, you know, we, we could have a Shuttle Mark II, but... Um, the boosters don't look that great. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I could put a fancier texture on it. I, I made them, so I could, I could spruce them up a little bit and make them look nicer. 
but they're still 6.6 .6 meters in diameter and look stubby and they don't look as sleek as the normal shell boosters so that's the downside <laughs> but all right well i'm gonna do some other interesting testing of my own with this uh, and we will see how things go but for now i have my result putting the aj260s on the shuttle stack in place of the regular srbs does have a very big effect and certainly increases the payload capacity by quite a lot so with that i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i will see you next time